Right, so I'll be uh, inviting Elsa to uh, start sharing her presentation. And uh, later on, we're going to have um, questions after the presentation. So if uh, during the presentation you have any questions, uh, I think it's better you just type them in the chat and uh, we're going to have uh, the question and answer, answer session when uh, Elsa is done presenting. Okay, a uh, warm welcome to everybody that's joined us um, this afternoon for our June town hall meeting. My name is uh, Elsa Volk, and I am an economic research officer at the Securities and Exchange Commission. And I will be taking you through today's uh, town hall discussion on bonds as an investment option on the capital markets. So I look forward to having an engaging discussion with everyone. And I hope I will be as um, simple as possible possible in my uh, explanations and in my uh, discussions. Thank you so much. Um, I just have one objective for my discussion this afternoon, and that is to be as uh, simple as possible and uh, hoping to communicate um, how bonds are an investment option for us uh, investors in the capital markets. So my presentation is going to take the following outline. Um, I'm going to start by first uh, discussing what bonds are. And then we'll talk about some of the key terms and key words that are used um, when we're talking about bonds. We'll then go into how bonds work and the difference between bonds and stocks. After that, we're going to um, go into depth and discuss on why bonds um, are an investment option for you and the different types of bonds that are available um, for investors in the market. We'll then talk about the different ways that we can buy bonds and participate in the market as well as uh, some of the common mistakes that uh, investors make um, when it comes to buying and selling the bonds. And lastly, I'll conclude by just highlighting the risks that are associated with bonds and then um, opening up the floor for questions and answers. So the question that I'm assuming a lot of, have, uh, a lot of us have today is what exactly is a bond? Um, I think the easiest way to understand what a bond is is to think about it like a loan. So, for example, you have a friend who asks to borrow a hundred kwacha from you, and your friend um, promises to pay you back uh, five kwacha on top of that hundred kwacha just for the trouble of asking for that money from you. Your friend also then says that they would give you back this hundred kwacha at the end of a year. So, bonds are similar to this, but instead of giving the money to your friend, you are loaning the money to a company or a government who is looking to raise that fund. And this company or government um, promises to give you back your money with an interest amount on top and promises to pay you back the full amount at a later um, date in the future. So that's the easiest 
um, way I, I like to think of one is basically you giving a loan to a company or a government and then promising to give you back that money at a future uh, date and um, paying you some sort of an interest uh, on top. But um, to understand uh, bonds better, there are some words that are commonly used um, and it, it can be a little bit confusing, especially for people who are not really um, sure or aware of these words. And so we are going to discuss what some of those key terms are and um, what they mean. So the first uh, term that is most commonly used when it comes to talking about bonds is the issue. Who or what is the issue? So think of the issuer as the company or the government that is borrowing money. So the government or the company is looking to raise some money to carry out our different projects. For example, a government may want to go and construct a school or a hospital. So in order for it to um, construct that school or hospital, it has to raise that money. And it can raise the money in different ways. And one of these ways is by borrowing money through issuing a bond. So just think of them as the person who is asking for a loan. A second uh, term that's commonly used in bonds is the word investor. Who or what is an investor? So think of an investor as the lender, like me and you. So in the example that I gave where your friend is asking for money, you are the investor because you are giving your friend the money. So in other words, the investor is the person who buys the bond and lends money to the issuer. The third term that's uh, commonly used in bonds is principle or face value or par value. So what does this mean? So all of these three words mean the same thing and they are usually used uh, interchangeably. So it's simply the amount that is borrowed. So it's the total amount of money that the issuer promises to pay you back at the time when a bond matures. Now, we also have another commonly used term uh, when it comes to bonds. And this is called, or what is called the coupon rate. So what is the coupon rate? Remember that example that I gave you where your friend was borrowing money and offered you to pay some five kwacha on top for the trouble? So the coupon rate is the same like that five kwacha. So it's the interest rate that the issuer promises to pay you on the bond. And um, it's usually um, uh, calculated on the principal amount. So just think of it as an annual fee for you lending the money to the company, the government, or whichever institutional entity is issuing a bond. Now, closely related to the coupon rate is the coupon. So what is the coupon? The coupon is just simply the interest payment. It's the actual monies that you receive from the issuer, and it is calculated and based on the coupon rate and the principal amount. So the coupon rate is expressed as a percentage, for example, 5%. So 5% will be calculated on that principal, and this will give you what is called the coupon. So the coupon is usually paid annually, but most entities pay it two times a year meaning twice a year, every six months. There's also another common word that's used uh, when you're talking about bonds and it's uh, maturity. So maturity is basically the due date. So the due date of when this bond or this loan has matured. So when this due date comes, the issuer is um, required to give you back the money that you lent it. There's another commonly used word, which is the tenor. So what, what is the tenor really? So the tenor is um, the length of time until a bond matures. So the, it's basically another way of saying, how long will your loan last? So bonds have got different tenors. They can be short, stated, medium, or long-term. I'll give you an example for government bonds. Um, in Zambia, there are different tenors. So there are two-year bonds, there are three-year bonds, five-year bonds, 10-year bonds, and the longest tenor is the 15-year bond. Other corporates also issue um, corporate bonds, and these are of different tenors. We have three years, five years. It's really, it really depends and it really varies. We have what is also called the yield to maturity. 
So when we hear or talk about yield to maturity, think of it like the profit or the return that you are going to get as an investor on your bond investment. We'll talk about this a little bit later in the slides. And the other bond term that I also just wanted to um, explain what it means is the market value. So what is the market value of a bond? So this is basically the price at which you buy or sell a bond. Um, sometimes it's different to the par value. Sometimes it's the same. And the market value um, usually fluctuates depending on the market conditions as well as demand and supply. There's one thing that I wanted to emphasize on these key terms, and that's on the coupon rate. So it's very important not to confuse the coupon rate with other interest rates on the market. So on the financial markets and the banks, for example, there are different um, rates. So for example, you have a lending rate. How much can you get a loan from a bank? Let's say it's 26%. So the coupon rate is not that. The coupon rate is basically an interest rate that is specific to that security. So you can have different securities with a coupon rate that is tied to it. And uh, this coupon rate can either be fixed or it can either be changing during the life of the bond. Now that we have those uh, key terms um, out of the way and we know what these key terms are, we can proceed to go more in depth and discuss more about bonds. So how do the bonds work? Um, I have a hypothetical example here that I just want to share with you on how bonds work. So for example, as an investor, you buy a three-year bond from company ABC for 10,000 kwacha. And this bond has a coupon rate of 10%. Now, remember what I said that the coupon payments are tied to the coupon rates. So that you will be receiving um, every year 10% of what you lend to the investor. So 10% of uh, 10,000 kwacha, which is a uh, 1,000 kwacha. So every year you will be receiving coupon payments from the company ABC of 1,000 kwacha. But remember again that I indicated that most issuers pay these coupon payments six uh, every six months or two times a year. So that means that when you divide 1,000 kwacha by two, you will be getting coupon payments of 500 kwacha every six months. And because this is a three-year bond, it means that at the three-year mark, at the maturity date or at the due date, the company, the issuer, is supposed to give you that 10,000 kwacha back. So we start from here, the yellow box, the year zero, you will invest 10,000 kwacha. In year one, the company has to start paying you your coupon payments or 500 kwacha every six months, or 1,000 kwacha every year. This goes into year two and in year three. In year three, you will also get back the principal amount of 10,000 kwacha. So this means that when you add all the coupon payments plus the principal that you get back, your total returns is 13,000 kwacha. So what, what returns can we as investors expect to get on on bonds. So the total returns on bonds are comprised of coupon payments and the principal amount. And we have discussed this in the previous example. So for the example that um, we're talking about here, the total returns is 13,000 kwacha, where you get a 3,000 kwacha in coupon payments and the 10,000 kwacha as the principal. Um, there are different uh, measures that are used to calculate the return on bonds. Um, but here, I just wanted to discuss uh, two commonly uh, used uh, measures. So the first one is the current yield. So the current yield just gives you a quick uh, sense of the annual return that, that you can get on a bond um, based on the current price that you pay. Um, I won't go too much into the formula, but um, the, the current yield is calculated by just uh, dividing the annual coupon payments divided by the market price. The second uh, measure to calculate the uh, return on the bonds is the yield to maturity. Uh, this is the one that is most commonly used. It, it, it's more complicated to calculate, but it gives you a more comprehensive and complete picture of the total return that you can expect to get if you buy this bond and hold it until the due date. Um, so closely related to the return on bonds, it's also important as investors to know 
that there are different payment, the different taxes that are applicable on these bonds, which will have an effect on the overall yield that you get. So the first uh, tax that is applicable is a 15% withholding tax on the coupon payments. There's also a 1% handling fee um, on the primary market. And on the secondary market, there is a fee on all buy and sell uh, trades for bonds on the secondary market. So that's just important to know as investors that um, how to calculate your yield, how to know if your bonds are really making you the money, and also what taxes and what uh, fees are um, applicable. Here, I just wanted to talk about the difference um, and just to compare the, the bonds and the stocks. So in the capital markets, the two most common financial products are bonds and stocks. So I just wanted to um, go through what the, the differences and similarities are between these two financial products. So when we talk about a bond, we're just basically talking about a loan with a promise to pay back the money in the future with um, frequent interest payments. On the other hand, when we're talking about stocks, we are basically just talking about ownership into a company. When we're talking about the issuers and in relation to bonds, the issuer, when it comes to bonds, includes entities like governments, companies, and financial institutions. But when it comes to stock, uh, stocks or shares, the issuer is the company. When it comes to the return, the return that you can expect to get as an investor in bonds is coupon payments, as well as your principal, of course, at the end of the, the due date. On the other hand, for stocks, the return is in the form of dividends and capital gains. For risk, bonds have a relatively lower risk as compared to stocks, while for yields, uh, bonds have a relatively lower yield as compared to stocks. So a, a nice way that I like to just remember this is the relationship between risk and yield. So the higher the risk, the higher um, the reward and vice versa. So as you can see, when you're comparing bonds to stocks, the, that relationship, you can see that there. Now, having discussed what a bond is, how bonds work, what is a bond and what is a stock, we're going to just uh, go into why as an investor, should you or would you consider investing in bonds? So one reason that, uh, that you can consider or to invest in bonds is diversification. There's a famous saying that goes like, uh, never keep all your eggs in one basket. And this also applies for investments. It's important to not put all your investments in one financial product, but to diversify. And so bonds offer you this opportunity to diversify your investments. You can have some investments in shares, some investments in stocks, and some investments in mutual fund or whatever other investment products are available to you. But bonds just provides you one of those. The other reason to invest in bonds is because they are relatively lower risk as compared to, for example, stocks. Um, we have discussed that uh, bonds offer um, a high level of security to investors because it is uh, guaranteed that you're receiving frequent um, coupon payments and you're supposed to receive your principal amount at the due date. So it's a relatively lower risk. Another reason to invest in bonds is that it, it, it helps um, and it is suitable when planning for long-term goals such as retirement and education because we explain how bonds work, the, the payments are guaranteed, and you know when exactly a bond is going to be due. So you're able to plan for your future in that way. Bonds also offer investors higher returns. Um, for example, just compared to um, most of the savings accounts that are available. I did a little bit of a study and I found that um, in 2024, the average interest rates on savings accounts was about 3.52%. So most bonds have a comparably higher um, return, but it's also important to save. <laughs> okay, so the uh, collateral. Bonds offer a means of collateral. So if you have a bond, you can use that as security. You can go to your bank or financial institution and present that as a collateral um, for you to get a loan or a mortgage. Um, the other reason why um, it's good or it's good for you to consider investing in bonds is because they provide that regular fixed income as we have previously discussed. So what types of bonds are there now that we know what bonds are, how they work, why should we invest in bonds, but what type of bonds are there? As an investor, what type of bond can I invest in? 
So I have here a picture of the world. So I'm just showing um, some of the ones that are available globally. Um, this is not everything, but this is just some of them. There's a whole array of bonds, but the concept is the same. So government bonds are bonds that are issued uh, by the government. So for example, in Zambia, the Zambian government would issue government bonds. For corporate bonds, these are bonds that are issued by corporates or companies. For municipal bonds, these are bonds that are issued by councils, or municipalities. So for example, um, just as, as a hypothetical example, the city council can go into the market and issue a, a municipal bond to raise money to construct a school or whatever project that it has um, in its area. For infrastructure bonds, these are bonds um, whose proceeds are intended to, to be used for To, to be used for effects. For example, the construction of bridge, a dam, the bonds that are issued by governments outside of ours, sustainable bonds. So basically, sustainable bonds are bonds that are issued for purposes of sustainability-related projects. Um, um, Sustainability-linked bonds, the different types of sustainable bonds that, that are available. Uh, lastly, um, I wanted to talk about uh, euro bonds. So euro bonds are just uh, bonds that are issued in a currency that is um, outside of your local currency. For example, in Zambia, our local currency is the Zambian kwacha. So if the Zambian government had to issue a dollar bond, a bond that is in dollars, this would be considered as a euro bond. So coming back down to Zambia, bringing it closer to home, what type of bonds are available here? So we have government bonds, we have corporate bonds, and we also have green bonds. So you are able to invest in any one of these um, bonds that are currently available in Zambia. We do not at the moment have any municipal um, bonds yet. So, um, Continuing on the type of bonds that are available for investors in Zambia, uh, like I said, we have government bonds um, that's issued by the government. We also have our corporate bonds. So here I'm just showing some of the institutions, the financial institutions, um, corporates that have issued um, corporate bonds. We have green bonds as well. We have our one issuer that has issued a, a green bond currently. So I'm sure now the question that's on everybody's mind is now that I know what a bond is, I know how I can invest in bonds, I know why I should invest in bonds, how do I go about um, buying and, and participating in the bond market? So I have here um, the different ways that um, investors can participate in the bond market. So the first option is uh, on the primary market. So when we say primary market, we're basically saying the first time that an entity is issuing a bond, it is going to the market for the first time to raise those funds. So for government bonds on the primary market, the way to participate, the first step is to open a CSD account at the Bank of Zambia. So a CSD account means a central securities depository account. So once you have that account opened, you can then go and buy the bonds directly from the Bank of Zambia. You can also visit this link to, to, to participate and to purchase your bonds there. For corporate bonds, um, there's also a primary market for corporate bonds. It's when the bond is issued for the first time. So how you can participate is by buying directly from the issuer through their broker. So the practice um, in Zambia has been that most of the corporate bonds that have been issued on the primary market have been done via private placement, but then are later listed um, on, the, on the stock exchange. So the second option is to participate in the secondary market. So the secondary market just means buying from um, individuals or institutions that have bought these um, bonds from the primary market. So they already have these bonds. 
So the secondary market means you're not buying directly from the issuer, but you're buying from the, the entities, persons who already own these bonds, who already hold these bonds. So for government bonds, the way that's to buy these bonds on the secondary market is to um, buy them through a SEC licensed dealer or a commercial bank. So on the website, we have a list of um, all the, the SEC licensed dealers that are um, able to, um, to assist you to buy these bonds on the secondary market. So all bonds on the secondary market, it is a regulatory requirement that you have to do this through a SEC licensed dealer. For corporate bonds, the way that you can uh, participate on the secondary market is by buying these bonds on the LUSE through a SEC licensed broker. So it's a similar method or it's a similar way as buying um, shares. You visit your broker and then they will facilitate that uh, for you. The third option of how you can buy uh, bonds is indirectly through mutual funds or collective investment schemes. So when you purchase or when you buy a fixed income fund um, in a collective investment scheme, you are indirectly participating or buying the, these bonds, either government bonds or corporate bonds or any type of bond. So if you buy a fixed income fund um, in a collective investment scheme, you are indirectly participating and you're getting those benefits um, that come with investing in bonds. So on the website as well, we have a list of the, the collective investment schemes that are licensed by the commission. Here, I just wanted to talk about uh, some of the common mistakes that um, investors make when it comes to um, um, bonds. So there is a misconception that um, bonds are not, the bonds do not have risks, which is not true. So as a wise investor, it's important for you to always know that any type of investment has a risk and there is a potential for losses. So it's very important to know as an investor that bonds are not risk-free in as much as we had said that they have relatively lower risks than, um, for example, shares, but they are not risk-free and there's a potential for losses. The other common mistake that investors make is ignoring inflation um, as, as well as ignoring the interest rates. So it's important to follow the trends in inflation rate because inflation has the ability to reduce the purchasing power that um, your bonds have. So for example, if uh, inflation rates are rising and you're receiving your coupon rates, there is that possibility or that potential that your purchasing power will be reducing. So it's very important to make that consideration. It's also important to follow the trends in the interest rates um, and to understand the relationship that bond prices have there's an inverse relationship with bond prices, and this means that uh, when bond prices go up, interest rates go down, and the opposite is also true. And this affects uh, ultimately your, your returns, so it's important to also watch out for that. The other common mistake that um, people make is not understanding opportunity costs. So what do I mean when I say opportunity costs? So it means the next best thing that you can do with your savings. So it's important to know that there are other options that you can do with your savings and to weigh um, the benefits that come with each one of them and allocating your savings accordingly. So I spoke about um, the fact that all investments have risks associated with them and um, bonds are not exempt. They also have risks that they carry. So what are some of these risks? So one of these risks is the credit risk. So credit risk is also the, the same as the default risk. And it is the chance that the issuer will not have enough money to pay you back when the bond matures or also when it's time for them to make these coupon payments. So imagine that example that we had given earlier where you lent money to your friend who promised to give you back um, the money at the end of the year, but something happens and he's not able to pay you back. The same can happen in a bond. So that is what is called the credit risk. The second risk that is uh, associated with bonds is interest rate risk. 
um, like I mentioned, it's important to know the relationship that interest rates have with um, bond returns, because this ultimately can affect the yields that you get um, from your bond. If you decide to sell it at a, um, a, a lower price than you bought it, for example, when interest rates go up, you may affect the yields that you get from your investment. The other risk that is associated with uh, bonds is the inflation risk. The inflation risk is uh, the risk that inflation eats away the purchasing power of your bond returns. So we have already spoken about this, but it's important to, for you to know as an investor that this also affects your investment. When we talk about um, currency risk, this is um, mostly related to bonds which are issued in a foreign currency. And um, it comes about when the currency, when your currency depreciates, you may end up losing out because of the loss in the value of, of the currency. So it's just an important thing to watch out for, especially for bonds which are denominated or which are issued in another currency other than your own. Um, the last risk that I wanted to talk about is the liquidity risk. So when we say liquidity risk, we are talking about the risk that you might have um, selling your bond before it matures. So for example, you buy a bond on the primary market and then you try to sell it in the secondary market, but you fail to find a buyer. Um, that's liquidity risk. Um, but fortunately for us in Zambia, um, our bonds are quite liquid and it's um, relatively um, easy for you to sell your bonds on the secondary market. Um, however, for corporate bonds, it's slightly, uh, it's, they usually don't trade as much. So there's also that um, to look out for. So based on um, that, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have seen that our bonds are one of the investment options that are available um, on the capital markets. But it's important as an investor to conduct your own research and to consider your risk tolerance and also seek professional advice before you go out and make any investment decision. We've also seen that it's important to diversify your investments across various investment products, as this can also help to manage the risks that come with any type of investment. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope I have um, done um, uh, uh, well enough in trying to explain what bonds are and I'm now opening up the floor for any questions that uh, you may have. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, thank you very much, Elsa, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, at this point in time, as Elsa said, we'll be uh, inviting questions. Um, I think uh, we're going to start with uh, the questions uh, in the chat section. I think I've seen uh, there have been a number of questions that have been uh, posted. So uh, Maboshe Sakeli asks, um, why is the principal regarded as a return? Um, next question says, uh, indeed, okay, that's about recording, okay. Um, are you able to make a detailed presentation on buying and selling of bonds on the secondary market with special emphasis on government bonds? Uh, next question, is it mandatory that coupons should be paid twice a year or they can be paid monthly? Okay, so I guess uh, Elsa can attend to these three questions for now. Thank you very much for those questions. Um, I'll start with the first one. Uh, why is the principal regarded as the, the return? So when calculating the, um, the yield, we're considering all the, um, the money that we're getting back. Remember the example that I gave? You had lent your friend um, some money a hundred pacha, for example, but your friend promises to pay you this money at the end of a fixed period. But that's just one way in which you are getting your money back. Remember, there are also these are frequent coupon payments that you will be receiving. So in order for you to um, arrive at the total returns that you are getting from this bond, you would consider all those um, 
coupon payments plus the amount that you'll be getting at the end of that period. The second question was um, whether we can make a detailed presentation on uh, buying and selling bonds um, on the secondary market. Um, thank you very much for that question. Yes, we can do that. Um, we can have a part two um, to this um, presentation. There is a lot that we haven't covered in here because bonds are so wide. There's so many concepts involved. But for this one, we just wanted to get the ball rolling just to make the masses aware on the foundation of um, what bonds are. But certainly we can come um, through with another town hall meeting with a more in-depth presentation on how people can buy and sell uh, government bonds on the secondary market. So thank you very much for that uh, question. Okay, uh, thanks for that. Uh, we'll continue to uh, read the questions. So uh, we have uh, another question. Are the green uh, bonds by CEC available to the public? Uh, e.g. or Lucy. Uh, another question says, um, who do you approach when you are selling your bond issued by BOZ, Bank of Zambia? Is it the commercial banks or what other institutions can one approach? Okay, uh, another question says, what is the difference between the corporate bonds and unit trusts, mutual funds? Okay, so um, the questions are very good and please keep them coming. Um, so for the question that was in relation to CEC and the green bond that they issued and whether these are available to the public. So like I had mentioned uh, during the presentation that um, most corporate bonds uh, that we have had in our country are usually issued um, via private placement in the primary market. So when companies are issuing via private placements, they would approach the investors directly. Um, so in that way, um, the public are not able to participate. However, you are able to participate once um, the company lists on the exchange. So when this bond is listed on the exchange, you are able to approach your broker and then you are able to buy and sell. Um, but this also depends on um, whether the current holders of that bond um, looking to sell their, their bonds. There was a question also um, on who to approach when selling your, your, your bonds, for example, um, your government bonds. So uh, like I mentioned, all um, bonds which are sold on the secondary market have to be um, done through a licensed dealer. So the licensed dealer is not only the commercial banks, there are other entities. Um, the list is available on the website, but most um, commercial banks do actually have the, that license for them to, to deal on your behalf. So um, I will um, share with this presentation the list of all the dealers who are licensed by the commission. So you can approach any of those um, entities if you have some bonds that you want to either sell or you want to, to buy. Um, there was also a question on uh, what's the difference between a corporate bond and a unit trust? Okay, that's a good question. So a corporate bond is uh, basically a bond that is issued by a company. And um, uh, it, so it's, for example, when a company is looking to raise money for whatever project it has, maybe expansion or whatever project that it, it has to, to, to undertake and it's looking to get that money. So then investors, whether individuals or institutions, are able to lend money to that company for a um, fixed income return, as well as for the principal to be paid back to them at some date in the future. On the other hand, a unit trust is basically where different investors are pulling their resources together. And then these resources are managed by a fund manager who then goes and invests in different uh, financial products. So a CIS um, can be 
uh, funds put together from different investors and invested into um, corporate bonds. They can invest into um, money market instruments. They can invest into properties. So with regards to what the difference is between a corporate bond and a unit trust, a corporate bond can be one of the products that um, the, the unit trust goes and invests in. At this point, I'll ask um, um, my colleagues from the CIS unit if they want to come in and just chip in on what um, a, co a collective investment scheme is. Ruben, you may go ahead and speak. Your mic is on. Okay, uh, I'm going to read uh, more questions. I can see uh, we have actually a number of questions in the chat. So, uh, I guess I, if there are other questions, uh, anybody can throw any questions. Uh, I advise that you can type it uh, in the chat and then Okay. I. I'll, I'll go ahead, ahead and read uh, more questions. questions. So, thanks for sharing this. However, can you please shed more light on the sustainable green bonds? I missed the details. Okay, uh, next question. Are there any other, are there other types of debt securities other than bonds and T-bills? Uh, that's treasury bills. Okay, there were two questions here. So second question, would a CIS be allowed to set up a debt fund exclusively, basically to solely invest in debt securities? Okay, so I will uh, answer those uh, questions as well. Please keep them coming. So, um. In relation to the question where um, we want uh, more information about sustainable bonds. Okay, so sustainable bonds are essentially the same as conventional bonds or the bonds that we have discussed. But um, there are some key differences. And uh, one of those key differences is on the use of proceeds. So for example, if an issuer wants to carry out a, a project, which has um, sustainability outcomes, for example, uh, production of uh, green energy, for example, or any project that has uh, sustainability outcomes in, in terms of uh, environmental, social, and governance returns, this would then fall under the, the umbrella of sustainability bonds. So in short words, um, a key um, distinguishing feature that, um, that, that you can make with regards to sustainability bonds is on the use of proceeds. So if a um, bond is going to be issued with the purpose of raising monies to be invested in a project which has uh, sustainable, sustainable outcomes, then this can be considered as a uh, sustainable bond. It's also important to note that there are some um, best practice uh, tenets um, that are globally acceptable as to what is considered a sustainable bond. Um, for example, we have what is called the ICMA principles. So the ICMA principles is basically the International uh, Capital Market Association, which has principles and guidelines for what is sustainable a project. So it will identify, it will itemize the requirements that have to be met for an issuer to, to be categorized as um, having raised funds for sustainable purposes. Um, sorry, I may have uh, missed the second question. Parents, if you may just uh, go over that for me as well. Thank you. Okay, okay so as uh, parents, parents are coming with the second question, I'll go into the third one. There was a question whether a CIS is uh, able to uh, have a fund that is primarily investing in data securities. And this is very uh, possible. Um, in which case the CIS will have what is known as a fixed income fund. 
so or a debt fund in which it invests are primarily United Securities. So yes, this is uh, very, very possible. Thank you. Um. Okay, uh, so Natasha, you can uh, jump in and um, add um, something. Uh, thank you, Clarence and Elsa. I just thought I add on to um, the first question with regards to the green bonds. Um, as Elsa mentioned, with regards to one um, issuance we have from CEC, I just thought I should mention the, the use of proceeds from the green bonds, which is actually meant to enhance their solar generation investments. And this is with regards to the CEC group. And if you look at that, that's uh, basically emphasizing, um, well, if we speak to the importance of this initiative, that is aimed at uh, combating deforestation and biodiversity, biodiversity loss, yeah. I just thought I should uh, mention that as an actual example. Thank you. Uh, so moving further, uh, does interest rate risk apply uh, even when you hold your bond to maturity? Uh, next question. Approximately how much do brokers charge? Uh, next question, when is it, when is the best time to buy a bond? Okay, uh, we have another question. How do I buy uh, green bonds? How do I buy green bonds as an individual? Okay, next question. How does interest rate uh, interest uh, rate risk affect the bond? Okay, thank you. Thank you for those questions. Please keep them coming. Okay, so I'll start with the last question. Um, and go up, upwards from there. So there was a question on how does uh, interest rates affect the bond? So this is a very, very uh, important uh, question. And um, so this interest rate risk comes about from the relationship that uh, interest rates have with our uh, bond prices. So um, there's an inverse relationship when uh, interest rates the bond prices will go down. And conversely, when interest rates go down, the bond prices will go up. Let me give you an example. So assume that uh, you have a bond that you bought at uh, 100 quarter, and um, the rate on that uh, bond is say um, 5%. So that bond has it will be paying you a coupon rate of 5%. And you bought this bond say uh, in 2020. Now, assume that uh, we are in a high interest uh, rate environment where interest rates are going up and we have new bonds that are being issued with higher interest rates. Say the new bonds that are being issued have interest rates of around 8%. If you are holding a 5% interest rate, uh, interest uh, uh, rather a bond with a 5% coupon rate and there are bonds with 8% with uh, interest rates, assuming you want to go into the market and sell your bond, which has... Um, 5% coupon rates. They may, it may not be as attractive as one that has a higher uh, interest rate of 8%. So the only way or the way that you can um, 
uh, make that sale is by discounting the price on your 5% uh, uh, bond, which means you had bought that at five at 100 kwacha, it has a 5% interest rate. Now you are unable to sell it at the same price that other bonds with 8% interest rate have. So the only way that you can sell it is by reducing the price because that is the only way that you can um, sell that bond because people will not prefer your bonds um, for other uh, for others where they can get even higher returns. So that's basically what the interest rate risk is, is that if you have a bond which was issued, which has a lower interest um, rate or coupon rate, which is fixed, and there are others which have higher uh, coupon rates, it may not be as um, favorable or as marketable. Hence, the only way that you can sell it is by discounting it and reducing your price. So that is essentially what we mean um, when we say the interest rate risk and the inverse relationship between the prices and risk. Um, there was a question about uh, the best time to buy a bond. Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, it's important to, to have savings and investments for a rainy day for um, your financial objectives, but it's also important to consult a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. So that's a very good question. And I would advise you that um, you can also reach out to our list of our licensed investment advisors to get that information. They can help you in planning your investments and also with determining what type of investments are suitable for you. What your risk profiles are, what your objectives are, it really just depends. So it, it, it would be good, like I had mentioned at the end of my presentation, to seek out um, advice from a financial advisor who are skilled and who uh, whose job actually is to give you uh, that kind of uh, in, uh, information. But it's a very, very uh, good question. Thank you. There was also a question. regards to uh, if interest rate risk um, only, uh, and that's also a good question. Okay. Okay. Um, th there was a, a question um, um, with regards to whether it was mandatory for coupons to be paid twice and that's more each way for the, the um usually it's an annual um amount that is paid to you as an investor and it is up to the issuer to decide how often to pay uh, those coupons to you so usually the practice is um, that most of the bonds that are issued, for example, the government bonds that we have, usually do pay the coupons twice a year. But really, it is not um, cast in stone that the coupons should be paid twice a year. Um, for example, going back to that hypothetical situation that we had given, where the coupon uh, payments were 1,000 kwacha, were 1,000 kwacha um, every year. So it is up to what the contract between you and the issuer says, right? They can decide to pay it more often. Um, for example, let's say they decide to pay it uh, four times a year. So you would divide 1,000 by four and you will receive 250 four times a year. But usually the practice that we have seen and most of the time is that um, the coupon is paid two times a year. Um, Natasha also wants to, to add in or allow her to come in at this point. Yeah, thank you, Elsa. Um, I think Elsa has done justice with regards to uh, the mandatory um, coupon payments. I just thought I could add, um, just like she mentioned, uh, the frequency of the bond payment or bonds um, is really determined uh, or rather set forth at the time of the issuance and can really vary. So there is no universal mandate that di dictates that all the Zambian bonds uh, must be paid uh, 
twice a year or once a year or whatever uh, period. Um, however, like she mentioned again, the semi-annual coupon payments are common for many types of bonds uh, worldwide. And this includes our government as well as our coupon bonds that have been discussed. Thank you. Okay, I'm um, going to go ahead and uh, just read uh, more questions from the audience. Okay. So would you advise someone to be buying bonds on a monthly basis? I, uh, clients, can I come in? I see there's a, a bit of a rate. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, Mr. Chalou. Yeah, yeah, let me let me go in. I think um, what my colleagues are belaboring is to explain the fact that um, we are doing awareness so that people become aware of the various capital market uh, products that they can invest in. We, however, do not yeah. give financial yeah. Hello? We do not give financial yeah. advice. Yeah. I think there is a feedback from somebody. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we do what I'm saying is we do not give financial advice. I think um, telling somebody how often they should invest would amount to financial advice. But the general advice would be that um, it depends on your risk profile and what you want to achieve. So the best answer would be approach one of our um, licensed advisors to um, help you determine the best way of uh, investing. I think that's what we can say. Okay. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for oh, that. Okay. Yeah, it was so quiet. Okay. Uh, I've mean, been I mean, advised that uh, yeah. a question was skipped. I've been advised that a question was skipped, uh, so I'm going to uh, read it so that it can be attended to. So kindly talk about the euro bonds. If I am in diaspora, how do I go about it? How do I transfer funds from one country to another? So I guess uh, those questions can be attended uh, to. Okay, uh, more questions? Okay, how active is the secondary, uh, secondary market in bonds and how easy is it to trade for a retail investor. Okay. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, for example, I buy bonds from Bank of Zambia and I want, okay, this was, uh, I'm sure a typo, and I don't want to be receiving coupon uh, payments periodic. Is there a way they can hold the coupon payments and pay all, pay me all, um, everything at the end of uh, the period, including principal plus coupons. Okay, another question. Kindly briefly why, why, explain why the coupon we, rate concept again. Up, uh, clients, why don't we take up maybe three questions at a time? <laughs> Okay, so uh, these questions will be attended to. Yeah, I think um, Elsa and the company can do that. Clarence. 
I can answer to the first question in terms of uh, how liquid uh, the bond market is. Uh, that, that's in reference to the uh, secondary uh, market. Uh, with respect to the government bonds, uh, the, the market is uh, uh, quite liquid. Uh, we're talking about a turnover ratio of, uh, okay. in, in, the, in the 40s. Then with respect to the corporate bonds, uh, the bonds that are issued by corporates and listed on the LUCE, the market is not very active, hence the we don't have uh, liquidity. The market is not liquid because there's, there's inactivity in the corporate bonds. Uh, I think Mr. Mulenga has spoken of uh, the corporate bonds, but uh, again, if you look at uh, like uh, government bonds, if you ask whether it is easy to uh, sell the bond, the second market is very uh, active for government bonds, meaning that uh, you would easily find someone buying your your bond. So. The liquidity for um, the government bond is there, meaning that you can um, find the buyer with ease. Then the other question that was posed was to do with uh, how do how easy is it to move money from one country to the other? Uh, okay, that one we may not give like a a concrete uh, response, but that one touches mostly on the money market for the commercial banks. And then the other issue that may need to be taken into account is um, the applicable laws within the country where the money is being uh, moved um, because that will determine issues of uh, uh, funds remittances to another jurisdiction. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Pitney. Thank you, Mr. Mulenga, for those interventions. Um, I also just uh, want to respond to some of the questions that we have. Um, there was one that um, was in relation to the diaspora and how they can participate. So, for example, on the, on the primary market, if you're in the diaspora and you want to participate, uh, you have to make sure that you have a CSD account as well as a um, a bank account with a commercial bank that is denominated in uh, the Zambian culture. In that way, you will be able to um, participate um, specifically on the, the primary market. Um, there was also a question about the euro bonds. Um, maybe I can just uh, re-echo what the concept of a euro bond is. Um, a euro bond is essentially a country that is issuing a, a bond security in a... Um, in a currency that's uh, not theirs. So for example, Zambia, our, our national currency is the Zambian kwacha. If uh, the, the, the country had to issue a bond that is denominated in, um, um, for example, the US dollar, that would be considered as a euro bond. Um, as the commission, we do not have, a, we do not um, have jurisdiction over that uh, area. There was also a question on uh, explaining the concept of the coupon rates. Um, of the coupon rates again. So yes, we can uh, go over that uh, concept. So essentially what the coupon rate is, uh, just to re-echo, is the interest rate which an issuer promises to pay you on the money that you lend them. Um, so it's like the annual fee that they that you charge them for them borrowing your money. So different um, bonds can have, some bonds have a fixed uh, rates, or others have floating rates. So those bonds which have a fixed rates, it means that at the time that the bond is issued, the coupon rate will remain the same until the bond um, matures, until the due date. While for those that have a floating um, coupon rate, the coupon rates can fluctuate, um, either going up or going down uh, during the life of the bond. Thank you. 
Elsa, just to expand on what you, uh, you said on the euro bonds, uh, basically a euro bond is, uh, as, the, as the name suggests, these are bonds which are issued in euro, in US dollars. And they're usually issued by um, sovereigns. So in a nutshell, that's what a euro bond is. Okay, uh, looking at time, I'm going to read uh, one more question. Okay, so when will bonds be added? Okay, uh, we'll add one more question. Can the account at Bank of Zambia be opened on Okay, so to open a, an account, um, a CSD account at the Bank of Zambia, you can uh, visit the Bank of Zambia website and there you will find an application form that you can fill in. And you can also submit the required uh, documents together with your application. Um, there is um, instructions that are provided on the website and you can open your account um, in that way. Once you have that account open, then you can go ahead and um, buy your bonds using the, the Bank of Zambia uh, investor portal. Thank you. Okay, in the interest of time. Uh, okay, um, friends, can, can, I, can, I make ending, a general, uh, can I make uh, a general comment? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, there's a uh, feedback there. Hello, I, I've seen that um, uh, Elsa and the group that are making the presentation. Please, uh, President Sechtalo, we can uh, hear you. We have the highest to repeat to this again. Uh, maybe you may um, have the uh, participants vote, but looking just at the number of questions, it looks like a topical issue which we could feature again. I don't know um, what you think. There are 97, yes. 98 questions, yeah. Yes, uh, indeed, Mr. Sechtalo, I agree that... Uh, if um, the um, attendees would like for us to have a part two where we can continue this discussion, we are more than willing to, to have that. But uh, also we have um, provided here our email address where if you have any burning questions, you can write to us and we'll definitely do our best to respond to you. But we also um, assuring that if the public uh, demands, we can come with a part two to this uh, series. Okay, uh, thanks for that. So uh, in the interest of time, uh, we'll be ending uh, today's uh, town hall meeting. Uh, I can see uh, there's still a number of pending questions. Uh, we'll try as much to uh, keep these questions and um, uh, in the next uh, town hall meeting, I'm sure uh, we can actually uh, begin with these questions. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending. I know uh, there were a few participants asking if uh, the, the recording is going to be shared, and yes, it's going to be uh, shared with the emails that were used uh, when joining. Thank you very much, all, and have a good day. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, bye.